I'm Michelle Graves, and welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money, where we bring you into my world, and what a world it is, through introducing you to people and situations that will hopefully empower you to get a vision for yourself and learn some things because we never grow too old to learn something new. Today's sec segment is especially interesting to me because it has to deal with my favorite subject, which is health and wellness. And as a component of health and wellness, we have to talk about fitness. And you know how the money lady is, which is, if I'm gonna talk about fitness, I'm gonna go to somebody who is the top in their arena. So I'm very fortunate today to have as my guest for the next hour, a woman who is at the top of her game in the field of fitness and health and wellness. And that is Annette Richardson, who is CEO of Two Real Productions, headquartered in Cincinnati, Ohio. She is a nationally acclaimed fitness and bodybuilder. Her body is gorgeous. Don't hate her. She works <laughs> hard. So without a lot of conversation, I'm going to get right into the meat of today's uh, show and bring you into the world of Annette Richardson. Get a pen and a, paste, pen, pen and a pencil out and a piece of paper mm -hmm. because you're going to learn some stuff and you're going to want to write it down. So here we go. Hello. Miss Richardson. Hello, Michelle. How are you? I'm doing really well and I am excited about being here. Um, just excited about the connection between health and wellness and wealth. Yes. And the lack thereof. Well, if you're sick, you won't be making any money. Well, and it will be very expensive for you. So a lot of times you have people talk about this is an extremely uh, expensive lifestyle when in reality sickness is a very uh, extreme lifestyle. Ex I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I truly just experienced a situation mm. uh, that was so eye-opening for me because yeah. I have not been in a hospital in 29 years since the birth of my last child. I have mm. had no experience in that world yeah. and I had a situation and actually, we were on set. Yes, yes. And um, that was absolutely devastating. And found out that I had kidney stones. Yeah, yeah. And um, didn't even know, didn't even know. And went into the hospital. Mm -hmm. And Annette, it is a zoo. <laughs> it is a scary place. I wouldn't take off my coat. I looked around and they were like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I need to have an escape plan. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get up yeah, out of here. Yeah. And um, when you get the bills, mm -hmm. I'm serious. Yes, yes. The bills. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. So, yes. I am attentively listening to you today. Yeah. And yeah. ditto to what you said. Yes. Health is cheaper than sickness. Oh my goodness. Any day of the week. Now here's the thing that I'd like for you to do. Okay. Because we just had a conversation and you said that the doctor asked you if you had been doing something. Drinking enough, they found that I was severely dehydrated. Excellent. De severely. So here's the situation. Okay. Where you go in you're in excruciating pain. Yes. You discover you have kidney stones. Yes. And the question he asks you is, am I drinking enough water? I just needed you to repeat that because here's the, here's the situation. In working with people, one of the prerequisites of them working with me is I suggest a gallon of water a day. I and hear you. In my home and so I'm a different type of trainer. I'm walking this thing out. I'm living this thing. I'm 55. I am serious about it. Um, I was also reading something in the green room that was talking about health and wellness. 
And one of the things that brought out with people getting into a lifestyle of health mm -hmm. is that their mindset is that it's so restrictive. You can't do this. You can't do that. That is not the case. What you're doing is actually opening yourself up to a new way of life. Mm -hmm. So that means that for me, I have a gallon of water upstairs in my bedroom. I have a gallon of water downstairs in the gym. I have a gallon of water. I do work part time. I have a gallon of water at my desk on my job. I, we can go to my car. I probably have about four water bottles. Uh, do I always get a gallon in? Uh, not all the time, but you're going to be more aware that you need to be drinking water if every time you turn around what you see is water. I, I'm just going to tell you mm -hmm. that experience mm -hmm. was an epiphany mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. because God has given me excellent health. Yes. 61. Yes. Yes, going on 62. Excellent health. Never, and they did say to me, which I thought was interesting, when they finished all the blood work and everything, they said that I had no infection. Mm. My blood count was stellar. No, Excellent. all my reads were stellar. But I had these ugly things that were tearing yeah. me apart. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I'm drinking like a mad woman. I Googled <laughs> and I am drinking water. I am drinking so much water, you'd think I was a Goodyear wimp. I am going to keep my body in order. Yeah, yeah, hydrate. Period. Very important. Um, and of course, a lot of people will say, well, I get water from different sources. There is nothing mm -hmm. like liquid water. So when you talk about health and wellness and it being expensive, uh, how expensive is water? I mean, really, you don't even have to buy water. Really, if you're really looking at it from an economic standpoint, boil your water. That's what I do. I use you, Kangen water, which is alkaline, and I boil my water if I don't have Kangen. Mm -hmm, but that's, mm -hmm, that's, mm -hmm, that's the mm -hmm, end of the game for me. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. My what wake I, up is here. What I find is that um, we have to find the time. Mm -hmm. We have to prioritize. Um, and I'm just going to tell it straight. Um, a lot of times I meet people, us as women, and we want to get healthy, and we don't like the way we look, and we don't like the way we feel. Uh, however, when we talk about workout, uh, we can't find the time. It's too expensive. Uh, i got to pick the kids up. These are things that you're going to have to do anyway. Mm -hmm. Getting healthy is going to give you more vitality to do all of that. But the other aspect of, of it is, is that we will get our hair done. We will get our eyelashes. We will get our uh, pedicures, manicures. And the things that I share with us as women is you don't have to worry too much about that if you do not take care of your health. You're Couple absolutely right. Because at the funeral home, <laughs> they're going to do your hair, they're going to do your makeup, and they're going to do your nails. Yes. So either you can sacrifice maybe getting that done and get the basics taken care of. Foundation. Foundation is important. Foundation is important in worship. Foundation is important in finances, and foundation is important in health. You have to get the basics down. Let me ask the camera crew if you all will put on screen for the viewers uh, a photo of Annette Richardson, who is a national champion bodybuilder. I want my viewers to see, yes, that is... Miss Annette, now how long did it take you to look like that? Well, that's a, that's a different process, and that's another thing that I share with women who see my body or come into uh, uh, my home where I train and they see the pictures of other women that are and have prepared for a show. That's a whole different process. Okay. Uh, we're, de we're dehydrated, so we literally build the body up to then tear the body down. My word. Yeah, it's real serious to do competition and compete. 
in figure, bodybuilding, powerlifting. So that's a whole different genre. Mm -hmm. You have to prepare yourself for that. Um, you see my muscles more because, to be quite honest, um, I've uh, uh, tanned and spray painted okay. because I have to be very darker. I'm about as dark as this table when I'm competing so that when I get up under the lights, you can see my cut. Ah. In real time, after a show, and everyone comes down off of the stage, you know they work out, but there's a different look. Okay. Your veins aren't popping. There's a whole different look. And when they say to me, I don't want to look like that, I just look at them because I'm going to be honest, there are times when people are saying that to me, um, they have uh, guts. Yes. And they're not and pregnant. Can, and, and they're, they're not, not pregnant. pregnant. Right. Okay, that's great. Pregnant. That's great. Not, that's great because I, I want to say guts and butts okay. everywhere. Yes, yes. Um, yes. Again, some of that is chemicals, food, old bowel in your system. Mm -hmm. It is just not all pure weight. Okay. And that's why it's a difference between just working out and getting a lifestyle of health and wellness. A lot of times people do work out, they are looking for an event, mm. a dress size, huh. or a mate. Really? An event, a dress size, a dress size or, a mate. or a mate. And a lot of times after the event, uh, after the dress has been worn, and the mate has not been what you thought they would be. Yes. Then they so go back mm -hmm. to where they were or they become worse. Mm. And so you don't do this for a event, a dress size, or a mate. You do this because your body glorifies God. I am so with you on that. And you are a living example of just that. Yeah, yeah. So how, tell me a little bit about your background in that and how you came on this journey to fitness and health. Because you're a little bit different than other trainers. Oh. I mean, I have friends that are trainers and it's all about those weights and strength, yeah, but it's yeah. not a holistic approach. Yeah. And in yeah. fact, early on, um, when I was CEO of, a, of one of my companies, I had a trainer. And I called him actually the Antichrist because <laughs> when I saw him coming, I start doing yeah. crosses and silver bullets like I'm just gonna <laughs> shoot you. And and he, but his his eating regimen was so unpleasant. I ate this dried breast chicken yes, 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 every yes. day, and I just. But I did I did get the weight off, but you I was attitudinal. Yes. Now, so let's talk about your experience and how you got started and where you are today. Well, a lot of clients, people always ask me, uh, were you ever obese? I've always been, uh, never been obese per se, per look. Mm-hmm. Unhealthy? Totally. Not uh, obese, but unhealthy. Totally unhealthy. Um, unhealthy in my eating, unhealthy in my lifestyle, unhealthy in my mindset. Uh, I came from, uh, I would say, nothing. I, I mean, so much trauma that it took me 27 years to put it in a book mm. because I had to get therapy, I had to relive things. Uh, I was a young mother, pregnant at 13. My mother was an alcoholic. I was a kid you would have told your kid never to be around. Okay. I got high. I laid up. I defiled my body. I was ridiculous. I would snatch your purse. I mm -hmm. had issues. And for me, I did know that I needed to get control of me. And so one of the ways to get control of me was to discipline myself. So in the process of doing drugs. Goodness gracious. I began to open up my door and run. That's how the journey started. And I would run and I would cry and I would, and every uh, 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 
concrete. Sometimes I would be running on concrete and it would be porous and I would think about how porous my life had been. And then there would be sometimes I would be running on grass and, and dirt and I would think about how dirty my life had been. Mm -hmm. It was a grueling process. And then I got into martial arts because I realized I needed to discipline me. It wasn't mm. about my color. It wasn't about me being pregnant at 13. It wasn't about my mother being an alcoholic. It was about me getting control of me. Yes. And then it began to expand. And then I really got the sense of what healthiness is. Not just a look, but emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy. Uh, okay, how many of us know beautiful people, male and female, great bodies, highly educated, and have paper? but we don't want to be around them. Right, because they're dysfunctional. And they're unhealthy. And they're unhealthy. To be around. Yes. I mean, you can't be around them for a minute without starting to scratch. Seriously. Either emotionally ah. or physically. Ah. Yeah. So it's not about yeah. a look. It's about learning lifestyle. You talked about uh, the eating. And uh, this occurs a lot because I do eating plans and you see chicken and you see fish and you see green things and you see things that you haven't done before, juicing. Um, you can become creative, mm -hmm. like the colors of a rainbow are every color that emanates from color starts with very basic colors. I don't even know. I mean, there's not that many basic colors that all the colors derive from. Right, right. So what you learn to do with that chicken is you began to learn there's other colors that can derive from that. Right. Put strawberries on it, squeeze lemon, uh, orange juice on it. It's amazing what orange juice, orange juice, if you take chicken, put hot olive oil in a pan, mm -hmm. season it up, sea salt, Mrs. Dash, we try to keep mm -hmm. it clean. Uh, and you pour in some orange juice. First of all, make sure your olive oil is hot so that it doesn't absorb all in the chicken. So you start learning mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. uh, once you do that, if you put a little orange juice on that, it kind of makes a gravy. So yeah. either you can keep it bland or you can begin to accept this is my lifestyle and you start being creative with it. Okay. So either the glass is half full or the glass is half empty. So Your you choice. Right. So you started with martial arts. Any yes. particular branch of martial arts? I've done Kempo, Taekwondo, and uh, Ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that's yes. where you just have a switchblade. <laughs> <laughs> and you run real fast. <laughs> you crazy. So, so yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, I love you. Yeah, and this uh, is how you learn this lifestyle. I take uh, 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 my clients upstairs in my kitchen. I show them how to prepare. I let them taste different things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I fix protein drinks that have fresh kale in it. I love uh, kale. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. Gosh. Oh, in a Raw kale I love. Vitamin C, vitamin yes. A, vitamin D. So you try to stay as natural as possible. Um, my goal for this year, um, was to do a organic garden in the backyard. Okay. So since we say, okay, this is expensive, then I'll grow, grow my your own. own. Right. So it expands who you are mm -hmm. in every aspect of your life. You get healthy in a lot of areas. Being healthy physically uh, made me look at being healthy financially. Okay. Gotcha. Because I don't want to be healthy physically and then my bill collectors drive me crazy and I become sick. Uh, right, from the stress and the from worry. From the stress of it all. So it is a inclusive lifestyle. This mm -hmm. isn't just about rah, 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 let's jump up, let's do some jumping jacks, let's go take a class. This is about maybe I can't get to the class today, but this is my lifestyle. Uh, this table here, you stand in front of it, you bend your knee, you put your heel on it, and you stretch. You don't need a bunch of equipment. It is not a expensive lifestyle. How did you just do that again? You stand in front of the table, <laughs> okay. you bend your knee. They're joints. They're joints. It's amazing to me as we're stretching how many people will take a leg and try to sling it around. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder how come so many people have hip surgery. Right. If God had not wanted your leg to bend, 
he would not have given you knees. Use your body anatomically like it was created to be. And if you think that uh, uh, you're not able to wrap your head around that, I have clients that have had bones fused together. Oh my they goodness. They can't bend their knees. Yeah. Ask them if they could revert back and bend their knees more if they would. Mm -hmm. I have taken clients seriously. You know, I have some clients and they come in and at first they want to do this and then they start whining, adults. Because I also work with children as well. Okay. Children have... Oh my goodness. Health and wellness. Uh, I had a parent bring a, at the time, I'd say maybe she might have been about 10 years old. Okay, little young girl. Lady okay, young lady. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why she brought her is because she was cutting up in school, and the school was saying that they wanted to put her on medication. Okay. And I All encouraged right. her to bring her to me. Let's take a look at and clean up mm -hmm, her eating mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. forth. But what I actually had her do was write down her story for me. What, what, what's your story? Well, just write your story down. And it was amazing because her story was she was mad at her mom for mm. her mom not accepting her dad. That was her story. We began to work through that. We began to work through that. And uh, after about, I'd say maybe a month, I had her write her story again, okay. the way she would see her story. Okay. Uh, I'm happy to tell you. I see this young lady now. She is getting ready to graduate. They did not put her on any kind of medication. Her self-esteem was low. When you discipline yourself to work out and get healthy, um, even at 10, she couldn't be mad at her mother anymore. Right. Now, she could be mad at me, the trainer, <laughs> but that's my position right. as a yeah. trainer. Right, right. So okay. we diverted her anger towards me because now I'm the one who's telling her to discipline herself, breathe, stand there, no, you don't get to move, no, I do need you to do this. And what she got clarity on is when you have to get yourself together, you don't have time to be mad at nobody else. And this goes for adult women adult males that I train, when it comes time for you to eat properly, I'm not really uh, going to be agreeable to you talking about your husband to me when you weren't able to even drink a glass of water today. That's a ah, problem. Ah, that's me. a problem. So by refocusing on the essential things, yeah. the other things tend to be put in their right order. In their right order. Right. They don't become... Because your husband is really not responsible for the choices that you make, correct? Correct. Nor are you really responsible for the choices your husband makes. I couldn't agree more. And, and okay, so let's just cut through the chase. I am a bona fide woman, sister, girl. Um, women. A lot of us are out of order. Yeah, we live very codependent lives. Well, and we focus a lot on our mates, our well, children, yeah, our jobs. Everybody but ourselves. And the reason why is because when it comes to facing your own health and wellness, as long as you're focused on your mate, your kids, your job, you're not you don't, you don't focused on you. Look, you don't have to focus on you. It's a cop out. It is a cop out, Miss Richardson. Out. It is a cop out. Mm -hmm. It really is. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I don't know how one breaks through that. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. Because we love our mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. although as I tell people, at some point they are grown and you must allow them to do what they have to do. They watch us. Right. I promise you, um, the majority of my married sisters that come in and work out with me, mm -hmm. I always share with them, you focus on you, your whole household will shift. First of all, we don't get how powerful we are as women. Mm. If we would be quiet mm. and just be in our power, yes, things would shift. So if you're preparing the food and you're bringing in the healthy stuff, let me just tell you, at first they're going to tell you they won't eat it, mm -hmm. but I guarantee you after a while, you're not even going to be able to get to your own sweet potatoes because your family going to go in there and try to eat all your healthy food. <laughs>
let's not mention <laughs> that when you start getting the results and start looking like oh my, you know a you babe. have no idea how many male clients I've gotten because their wives have now gone home and they're leaning out and getting some guns and something about our wonderful men they are not trying to see a female I'll do them yes <laughs> So I get a lot of male clients because they want to come in and see, okay, what's up? And the wonderful thing when they come in and they see how tiny I am, it's that male thing. And I'm like, yeah. I'm getting ready to work oh, you. I'm getting ready to get you. <laughs> <laughs> and so they began to take on a healthy lifestyle as well. Also, families. I have mothers who bring their children there because they are able to. It's my home. And the kids are observant. You'd be amazed at what kids really watch. Those bad attitudes, they watching you. Ah. I just had a conversation with a, a, a married female client, and I was sharing with her the tragic thing, and women need to get this, about how your mate, you know, you and him get into it, and you have situations, and you don't understand why he's treating you like that. And I was sharing with this one particular married woman, what you must keep in mind your husband says you don't support him, he's kind of leery of you, but you need to be mindful. Your, your husband has watched you backstab your girlfriends. Ah. This your sister girlfriend. Yeah. You at home, just you and your husband. And you stabbing her. And he's watching. And he's watching that. So if he that's starts your thinking, friend, yeah, what, what am I? What, what hope do I have? And so this health and right. wellness reaches so many levels. It's about breathing right. It's about stretching. How do you breathe when you say breathe right? How does that look? This is excellent. First of all, when we, and, and, and I go scripture, God said he formed a man out of the dust and then he breathed where? On him. In him. Specifically. S he said he breathed into the man's nostrils. nostrils. So right now, just breathe in with your nostrils. Relax, 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 relax your heart, relax your shoulder. In like two straws. That's breath. So you breathe in, two nostrils, up from the ground. Everything, a seed, a seed. You plant a seed, you put it in the ground, it germinates, it pushes its way up, up. through the dirt. So when you breathe with your nostrils, you use them like two straws. You bring the air up from the ground. You let it dance in your body. And then whenever yeah. it's ready, it comes out. But we have a tendency to do this. And that always is amazing to me because it's as though we're looking for oxygen. Yes, and it's there. Oxygen is all around us. Yes. Isn't it's that amazing? It is all around us. We are literally dipped into it. It's not dipped into us. We're dipped into it. And so what you do is you just become through your nostrils, through your nostrils. Because he said, "A foreign man out of dust, he breathed into his nostrils, and then he became a living soul." Yes. There are people who are literally walking around right now dead. They're not even breathing. Ooh. You wonder why you have poor circulation. You wonder how come you have headaches. You want. You're breathe. not even breathing. Wow. Stretching, stretching. You look at a baby. You look at a dog. You look at a cat. You look at, you look at just animals and babies. And they don't they're always oh. stretching. And, uh, they stretch. And boy, do they stretch. Seriously. They stretch. I have my daughter's orange cat. I was looking at him. And this cat is always stretching. And we need to always stretch. My goodness. We need to stretch. For oxygen to get into our muscles. Every and joint has a synovial uh, fluid pocket. A lot of people's fluid pockets are dry. That's why we're arthritic. That's why we're mm -hmm. crinking and, and we don't stretch. And nor do we stretch in flesh physically and nor do we stretch in our own life. We want to stay just like this. Yes. It's total health and wellness. Your body is a pure reflection of where you are. Um, I just recently had a conversation with uh, someone I work with, and they were sharing with me that someone had an empowerment seminar. And the person that was there was talking about 
uh, if you have gut, you probably have mother issues. Now, I thought that was very interesting hmm. because I promise you, I don't even know who gave the seminar, but I can tell you this, matter of fact, don't know it, they could call me, whatever. I guarantee you that person has worked with me. Ah. Whoever gave that seminar who was talking about your belly is a reflection of some mother issues, I guarantee you they have worked with me at some point. Oh, my goodness. Because that comes to me naturally. Yes. I see things in people's bodies. It shows up whether you realize it or, or not. So a belly, a poochy belly. Could be birthing issues. Could be birthing issues. Doesn't have to be your mother. It could be that it's time for you to step into some entrepreneur. Didn't you just have uh, uh, yeah, somebody yes, on your yes, previous show yeah, yeah, bar, talking bar, about hey. entrepreneurship? You are to birth something. And it's and sitting you, there. And it's sitting there. Well, let's say it could be sitting there with some bow, but there is uh, yes. something that you are supposed to be birthing. Or there is something related to a birthing issue, mother issue. Something needs to move. My goodness. You're limited. You can't stretch. Then that means that you are tightwad. You're unflexible. You don't want to move. It's your way or the, the highway. highway. Mm hmm it shows up in your body. Goodness gracious. You're not breathing? Ms. Richardson, we can sit in front of any mall and just take camera pictures. And I guarantee you, people I mean, don't really? breathe, I tell you. And some of it comes from when we're little. So okay. a lot of times when I'm working with people, we, got, we have to peel off layers, like that onion. Mm -hmm, we have to peel mm -hmm. off layers, we have to peel off layers. And a lot of times it comes down to childhood issues. And that holding the breath, Right. Fear. Fear. Excellent. Fear. So we don't even You're take scared. deep. scared. Oh, my goodness. Right. Afraid. Afraid of what? Maybe even your own power. Maybe. Maybe even your own visions, your own goals. Right. But rejection will take you down that path. Absolutely. Particularly if you're female. Absolutely. Because females have been crushed as girls. They've been told they're ugly. You're not pretty. Or you're this or you're that. And so females mm -hmm. grow up with issues mm -hmm. that males don't have. Yes, absolutely. And they think when they marry her, they're marrying that sweet, pretty thing. And actually, they're marrying a nut. Yeah. Oh, my God. Amazing. Amazing. However, it all becomes his fault. Right. But it's no, not him. No, really it's not. Let's, let's separate let's, that. Yes. Let's really get clarity on where that comes from. And uh, a lot of times you have to breathe and stretch mm -hmm. and be still and be challenged within your own self to really see where that emanates from. Yes. That is so powerful. Yeah. So you teach yeah. the breathing, yes. which actually I did not know until today. I yeah. didn't because I have lived such a alpha female lifestyle of I got to do it now, I got to have it now, this got to happen, this got, and trying to multitask mm. and running people and doing this and I know I haven't breathed right. Oh my goodness. I know, I know I haven't. I'm just saying to you, this is very, very different. This is different. But you, but we say we want a new life. Uh, we say, I'm a new creature in Christ. We say, I want a new career. We say, we say those things, but we have to be those things. I am that I am. Then why don't you be? Right. I got it. What? I have to live this lifestyle. I have to stretch. Um, it would not be good if you came to me and I was not healthy. Oh, no. Oh, it no. would be like that would be going weird. to a hairdresser and, and half her hair is it's gone. Not. And it's not a style. Right. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Or going to a dentist and he's missing teeth. Uh, yeah. That's a problem to me. Yeah. Everyone who says that they are able to assist you, yes, they can assist you to lose weight. But to assist you with getting this as your lifestyle. Um, That's major. Oh, my goodness. That is 
that's major mm -hmm. because we know statistically that most of the weight loss programs do not work or if so temporarily Tem that's what I'm saying temporarily they'll get that weight off but then they'll go right back to those habits again absolutely and yes. then here we go I was watching a commercial and um, not naming names and they were just talking about you know they will deliver your food to you that's expensive yeah what happens when they can't deliver the food to you there is a need for you to know how to prepare your own food you'd be shocked at how many women that I've began to assist and they don't even know how to cook are you serious no they're asking how to fix a sweet potato for real okay and I'm like you know what I'm sure you have a crock pot or somebody in your family you know how many people have crock pots I have no idea. I have, I have no time to cook. And then I can't prepare this. I'm busy. I can't take, take your sweet potatoes, put some olive oil on it, put a little cinnamon, a little nutmeg. And just recently, one of my clients uh, shared this with me. I didn't do it. Um, that's a whole nother conversation about the aluminum. But they took the aluminum foil, wrapped that potato in it, put that potato in the crock pot, done. You don't have to worry about that. When you come in, you're running, you have a busy schedule, you grab that sweet potato. Uh, I got pumpkin seeds in my purse right now. Right. Uh, uh, you put that sweet potato in your bag and you keep it moving. You do not have to give up anything. You're going to have more energy, more focus. Uh, you're going to be pleasant. Most people are nutritionally starved, and that's probably why they're so irritable. Oh, I'm positive. You're because hungry. right. Well, look you're at look at the microwave. You are going to kill all your nutrients when you nuke. That's why you nuke that thing. And so literally you're eating food that has no nutritional value. You know what it's like, Michelle? I, I yeah. Remember the plastic fruit your grandparents had? Yes. Okay. You might as well pick up a plastic apple and eat it. Because <laughs> that's what's happening now. And so, and so you learn about what does GMO mean, genetically modified. So, so it's an inclusive lifestyle of health and wellness. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I was just talking to um, um, Don in the green room, and one of the things we were talking about is a fast food restaurant where the, because I said, which I usually don't, I drink a lot of water, but I was going to treat myself today. Uh -huh. And uh, we talked about a coffee frappuccino. Uh -huh. And she had just shared with me, Annette, do you know that that coffee frappuccino, one, is 1,200 calories. Okay, we're supposed to basically maintain off of, let's say, let's take it to the max, 2,000. 2,000 a day. You drank one drink that was 1,200. That's half. And then you were wondering why, why can't I lean out? Uh, how come I can't get healthier? Because you're drinking one drink that's 1,200 calories that has no nutritional value. Nothing. Most of it is sugar and sodium. Even in a sweet drink, there's sodium. So now you have to really start looking at what am I putting into my body. Young women that I work with, because, you know, of course I go out and I do motivational speaking to young women who have low self-esteem. Okay. When they began to take better care of their bodies, mm -hmm. their self-esteem rises. Again, I'm 55. I take care of my body. Anybody can't touch me. Oh, I. Oh, hey. As a grown woman, I'm, I'm serious. You, so you what kill about it. our young ladies? Right. But I think a lot of it has to do again with the example that has been put before them, mm -hmm. and with their mothers and their grandmothers, and they're and they're absorbing the message. Mm -hmm subconsciously they're absorbing the message mm. and and it's important because so many women feel like crap mm. I just have to say it the way it is mm. yeah, true. Um, they they do not feel affirmed within themselves That's true. Uh, they talk about uh, themselves in the third person mm. Mm. and and this constant constant obsession with appearance which is my face, yes, and I'm like, what I got on. What, 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 shoe shoes, up what, what shoe are you wearing? Oh, did you try this makeup? But your body looks like somebody crazy. A hot mess. A hot mess. Yeah. You yeah. know how yeah. does and that know happen? And they know that. I believe and they, they do know, know that, that. And they keep buying stuff and buying stuff. The trinkets, the bobbits. They look, look. I go out sometimes. I am. 
baseball cap, hair up, grunge looking. And I'm okay with it because here's the thing. My foundation is, is awesome. Good. I could wear a potato sack. <laughs> Got it. I could be grunge all week. I'm going to get my water in. I'm going to get my food in. But when I do put on a dress. It's going to hug. Oh, I'm straight. Mm -hmm. Because the foundation. It's the foundation. But I was that person. Again, my mother was an alcoholic. Half of my adult life, I thought I was ugly and stupid. Wow. So what caused the change? Story. What made the shift? Because uh, you talked about going into making yes. the decision, yes. then you went into martial arts, yes. and then for martial arts, where did you progress to? Actively assisting others. Okay. So you have to give back. Okay. So you have to give back. So what I got clarity on is I made it out. Wow. I made it out, okay? So the girl that I used to want to be who had a mother who was a nurse and her hair was always beautiful mm -hmm. and barrettes and I had a nappy head and my mother was drunk laying on the floor and I wanted to be here. You know what really made that shift? The moment I went into Starbucks and seeing people uh, moving away from a person only to realize that the, the, the derelict, the filthy, the smelly, the hair all over their head, matted and dirty, that was the girl I used to want to be. So the girl who was bad, pregnant, on drugs, ridiculous, who wanted to be the good, educated, wonderful, mm -hmm. clean girl, it turned out that the girl was homeless and I wasn't. See? And so be very careful what you're reaching and striving for. Right. The basics are the best, the foundational, the simplicity of it all. Right. Most of us have enough trinkets and bobbins to last us for the rest of our life. Oh, my God. What are those Gucci, Louis Vuitton what? shoes going to do if they got to amputate your leg because you got diabetes? Really? Uh, I am really? so, you are, you are keeping this so on point. Really? Because it is a really. Oh my goodness. They I, have I, to I mean, take your is. fingers. What are they going to do with them diamonds that you had the fellas buy you while you was hanging out when you could have been working out? Right. And learning how to love yourself. Yeah. And, and value the gift of life. Right. Go, go into some nursing homes now. It's not elderly. It's us. It's us. Well, we got 10,000 people a day moving out the system. Yeah. And it's a really scary thing with these baby boomers. That's us. Yes. And I just, please give us your phone number. My phone number is area code 513-470-5519. Again, it is 513-470-5519. Five five one nine. It's about health and wellness totally, not a look, a lifestyle. And viewers, on that note, I have just concluded a powerful cut to the chase interview with Annette Richardson, bodybuilder, holistic, physical fitness trainer. And I encourage you to look in the mirror Keep it real and make a decision that you will love the body you're in. Mm -hmm. And you have to do that by taking the necessary steps. Okay? That's me for today, Michelle Graves, the money lady, as always. I love you. You're precious to me. And God bless you. See you next time.